Most of us are likely to have our first theatrical experiences with some form other than actually attending theater. Movies, television, video, all sorts of electronic media. The list seems to grow more quickly by the day. When we see these electronic presentations, we may experience a wide range of emotions, the same emotions that theater can evoke in us. So the inevitable question that arises is this, do we really still need theater? Isn't it an archaic, difficult form of entertainment that's outlived its usefulness? What is the point of going to the theater today when we have all of these other forms of entertainment available 24 hours a day, seven days a week? What most of us don't realize or think about is that all of these electronic media types have their roots in live theater. Theater is the forerunner, the foundation of everything we see. For more than 2,500 years, theater was the only form of dramatic art that existed. Around 1900, this began to change, and it continued to change throughout the 20th century as technology rapidly developed. Silent films, radio, sound films, television, computers, DVDs, and streaming video on computers appeared in relatively quick succession and transformed the entertainment landscape. But it's important to keep in mind that the storytelling techniques they employ were developed and perfected during the long history of live theater. Over this span, Theater has undergone many changes and followed diverse paths. When we attend the theater today, we and a few hundred other people come together to see a performance that will last approximately two hours on an indoor stage illuminated by artificial light. But theater going has not always been this way. Our experience would seem strange to Greeks living in the 5th century BCE as they assembled at dawn in an outdoor theater seating some 17,000 people to watch a series of plays that lasted all day under the bright sunlight. Our experience would seem equally strange to a 15th century audience in England gathered at various places along a route to watch a series of short biblical plays performed on wagons that moved from one performance site to the next. Theatrical experience has been as varied as the cultures in which it appeared. This diversity raises some questions about the appeal of theater. Why do people create theater? What attracts audiences to it? The impulse to create theater is universal, and theater developed independently in Greece, India, China, Indonesia, and Japan, while elaborate theatrical rituals existed in many cultures in Africa and North America. Theater deals with the mystery, history, and ambiguity of human behavior and events. Plays speak to us of individuals as well as of groups. Theater aims to provoke thought while entertaining us, rather than provide concrete answers or solutions. The most important aspect of what attracts people to theater is the fact that it is live. It happens at a given moment with a group of people inhabiting the same space. The performers and the audience become a unique community, and the interchange of energy between the two groups is different at each and every performance. It is unlike anything that can be experienced with recorded media. In this theater appreciation class, we will look at the elements of theater that contribute to making each performance a singular, collaborative, social, and cultural event. We'll begin by taking a look at some basic issues, the nature and function of theater, the relationship of theater to other art forms, and some criteria for judging theatrical performances. 
We'll study the various forms and styles that developed over centuries and to look at the contributions of the various artists and technicians who participate in each production. Most importantly, we'll attend a number of plays as a group and experience together the ways that entering into a community with performers and fellow audience members enriches our lives.